Welcome to the second edition of 8 O'Clock Zone. We've been getting reports that you guys think some of our viewers are a bit on the ancient side. So we're giving you the chance, that's right, you, to become a Zone reviewer. That's right, mate, you. If you're between 8 and 15 and you'd like to review your favourite games right here, right now, well, soon anyway, on the show with Mutt and Bev and all the other oldies, put a review of your fave game on paper and send it to us, along with your name, age and address, to the Zone. We're younger than you, ha ha ha, competition. P.O. Box 27, Willoughby, New South Wales, 2068. OK, now if you can get onto that and you could be joining us very soon in Zoneland. Now last week we brought you a review of Michael Jordan's hot new game. This week it's time for a shack attack. It's coming out for Christmas on both systems and it's called Shark Fu. Shark Fu. Sounds rude, doesn't it? Well, what it is is Shaquille O'Neal in the world of Street Fighter. And he's got the whole deal. Secret special moves, choice of heaps of characters, complete six button action and plenty of carnage to be had. Now the story goes that Shaq was walking around little Tokyo waiting to play in the all-star basketball game when he meets this little Asian man who calls him Warrior of the Stars and gives him special martial arts powers and sends him back to ancient China to fight in some tournament and now Shaq's got a fight to make it back to the all-star game. How touching, but who cares? It's the gameplay that's important and in this game it kicks. The moves are easy to operate, the graphics are crisp and clear, and the collision graphics are spot on. Play as Shaq or any other characters. They're all good value. All in all, it's a solid fighting game. No better than Mortal Kombat 2 or Street Fighter 2, but then again, no worse. 85. You'll find this one on the Mega Drive or the SNES. It didn't excite me, but it plays well. 78. It's that time again. You know what I mean. Well, maybe you don't. So I'll tell you. The buzz. Were you born in the USA? I wasn't. But that doesn't mean I don't know what's going on over there. In fact, right with me here, I have the top 10 games in the USA as of today, right now. They're Mortal Kombat, Super Metroid, Street Fighter Turbo, Star Fox, Earth Home Gym, because that's tragically cool, Samurai Showdown, Wild Guns, World Series Baseball, and Pocky and Rocky. Just in case you wanted to know. Hot off the presses from Japan, we saw Virtual Racing. We also saw Virtual Fighters, and they're all tragically cool games. So what Virtual Game's going to come out next? Well, let me tell you. We're going to be copped with Virtual Cop. What's this game about? Biffo, Biffo, and more Biffo. Can't get cooler than that. Now, who said video games are unhealthy? We heard a rumor that early next year, or maybe later next year, well, sometime next year, Nintendo are bringing out a game that you plug into your exercise bike at home. That's right, you have your exercise bike. You plug your exercise bike into your SNES and then into your TV and you race like a Tour de France or something. You race up hills, down hills, and the bike gets harder to pedal as you race along. Now, what could be healthier than that? I ask you, because, you know, when you're pedaling at home normally on your, on your bike, you don't go anywhere. How boring is that? Time to take a trip back into time just for a moment. Remember this? Over the next few weeks, we will give you a chance to win. Well, actually, we'll give three people a chance to win a game and a skateboard. Okay, if you want to win all that great stuff, all you've got to do is answer this question. And, of course, last week's question and send it into PO Box 27, Willoughby, New South Wales 2068. This week's question is, when Rex is bored, he plays with something. What is it? It's a two-word answer, and the first word is yo. Time to draw the Doom 2 competition. That's right, I've got a whole heap of entries here, and I'm going to draw five out, and he's going to win, she's going to win, whoever it is is going to win. All right, I just count them. One... Two, three, four, five. Right. Here we go. And the winners are, please, roll the super. Mr. Bradley Jenkins of Hyde Park in uh, Queensland, I think that is. 4812. Mr. D. Hayes of uh, Preston in Victoria. James Richardson of uh, Devonport in Tasmania. Oh, good to see Tasmanians. Oh, yeah, my friend. Darren Blaney of Ashgrove in Queensland. That's four. And the last one, James, old man McDonald, who had a farm of blue water in Queensland. I didn't mean that about McDonald. James McDonald, it's a really cool name, trust me. And these people didn't win. Well, that's all we have for the Doom Comp. That's all we have for the buzz this week. So remember something. Remember something and give it to your mother. Thanks very much. Bye. Some interesting news in that lot, so stay tuned.
After the break, we'll be back with Rise of the Robots and International Rugby. But first, here's Bev with some red hot hints. Today we're talking about beat-em-ups. Now here's a few helpful hints that'll help you get to any beat-em-up that's around. A common problem beat-em-up players get themselves into is chasing people all over the screen. Stop it. Stick to the middle, otherwise you're going to get caught in the corners and mashed up by your opponent. Also, stay away from the edges, because if you can't see your opponent, then you don't know what you're hitting, and that's the end of the game for you. By staying in the middle, this gives you more time to manoeuvre if you do get into problems. Also, it gives you more time to work out what special moves you can do. And if your players are coming from the right or the left, it gives you more time to work out where they're coming from and how to take them. Now remember, the key to the whole process is staying in the middle and not chasing your opponents. Otherwise, it's certain doom. American sports games have captured the imagination of you guys. Gridiron, baseball, ice hockey and basketball games are all bestsellers. EA have made a homegrown game all about rugby now for the Mega Drive. So, come on Aussie, come on. Taking a game like rugby and putting it into a video game is a pretty big task. And games before this have failed miserably. But this one, by EA, definitely is a step in the right direction. Like other sports games, it offers heaps of options such as tournaments, exhibition games, etc, etc. As well as your choice to play as any of the international sides that tour around the world. It seems that they've based this game on FIFA Soccer. The way they've styled the graphics, the position from which the game is viewed and the easy controls. And it seems to work really well. But don't be fooled. Because this game is still very difficult to get a handle on. So if you're a sports sim nut, then this one is definitely worth the time it takes to learn how to play it. Because when you get into it, it's just as much fun as soccer, hockey or Madden football. A great effort by the guys and girls at EA. 78. After a while it loses its excitement. Well, for me anyway. Still, not a bad game. 72. Time now to look at some of the accessories available in our segment called Stuff. When it's time to get down and boogaloo till you puke with your best friends, you've got to have the right stuff. So let's take a quick stock take of some multiplayer hardware. For the SNES, you can't go past the Hudson Soft 5 player adapter. This thumping piece of plastic will get you and five of your very close friends grinding away on games like NHL Hockey and FIFA Soccer. Or if four player actions ago, Super Bomberman and NBA Jam are good examples of games. And there's a rumour that a game called Street Racer will be coming out, which you can use this on, and it's going to be a Mario Kart type game except for four players. Now, that's what I call heaps of fun. Now for the Sega heads, there's two choices. The EA four-player adapter will get Sports Billion Sister Sue playing on all the EA-released sports games such as hockey and soccer and the like. And the Sega Tap will get you four-player action on games like NBA Jam, Gauntlet 4 and Micro Machines. Now this means if you've got a Mega Drive and a combination of EA and Sega titles, you have to buy both player adapters. Not so good? Well, Sega have come up with a really cool idea, cool idea even, called J-Carts. Now these are carts like Pete Sampras Tennis and the soon to be released Micro Machines 2, where the extra two portholes for a four player adapter are built into the cart. Now that's what I call a good idea. Here's a cheat for the matters of bikeathons, Road Rash 2 on the Mega Drive. Enter this code, 0H4R550H. This will bring you to level 5, with $20,000 to spend, riding to Diablo. Now put the pedal to the metal, grind the bitumen and shop till you drop on level 5. OK, so not everybody likes some of the educational games that are available. But look at it this way. When you get down to it, some of them are actually fun and worth having a good look at. I mean, how impressed would your parents be if you start to take an interest in educational games? Maybe they'll be impressed enough to buy you a game you really want. Well, here's his own selection of some cool educational games. I don't know about you, but the thing I liked most about school was not going. So when the guys at the zone told me to look into some IBM PC educational games, I was about ready to hurl. But I was pleasantly surprised because of games like this. Funny Box, really cool game. Have a look at it, it's on your screen right now. Wow, look, big scary monsters, and you can even learn heaps about them. You can watch movies on them, you can travel back into the past, 
You can even play this really cool game. Check it out, it's pretty cool. And you can even create your own di dinosaur. That's right. And you get these really cool glasses. That's right, they make everything 3D. Look, I'm really here. Anyway, apart from that, you can get heat. They've got heaps of other games, these flakes. Uh, knowledge, knowledge adventure games, that's what they're called. They've got ones about the human body, the zoo, safaris, the space, under the sea, even one about bugs. That would be cool. Now, if, if more imagination type building educational games is the way you want to go, you want to build up your imagination. If you're a young'un, you want to be a writer when you go up or something, games like this, mind game. Sounds heavy, I know, but it's a really cool game and there's a heap of these titles just in the background and I might get the cameraman just to take a shot as I step out of frame now. Cool! What? A lot of them feature really ugly people like this, so it looks like Bev on a bad day. These are really cool games as well, so go into your shop, have fun playing educational games. Hey, they can be fun. I'm being serious. We're down here in the games room again with a few more hints and tips on some of the tougher games. Now the one we have today is Sparkster. It's only new on the market, but it does have a few tricky bits, like the end level bias and a few things like that. So me and Matt are going to show you how to get through it. First off, we've got the end of level boss for number one. Now here, the best attack seems to be jumping and using your spin attack. This way you don't get hit by the swinging arms. But beware, when you defeat the first guy, there's a second one. So just use the same attack approach and you'll defeat him quite easily. Next up, when you see these little switch screw-like things, use your spin attack to open the platforms near or around you, enabling you to pass through and find the areas that are further on. This is also a good tactic when facing the next end of level boss. This screw attack takes away all the screws of each of the sections of the boss and then finally defeating him. Well there you have it, there's some of the basics to the game Sparkster. Next week we'll be bringing you more play guides, but now it's back to the zone. The zone, the zone. Rise of the Robots could just change the way we look at PC fight games. It's top of the range. So it's sort of like comparing a VW to a Ferrari. The makers of the game have poured literally millions of dollars into this project, so let's hope it was money well spent. Here's the first full rendered and animated fight sim on the PC, and it's called Rise of the Robots. But what makes the game so special is the graphics. I mean, just have a look for yourself. But what about the gameplay, I hear you ask? Bev? Well, you've got to be quick to get through this one. Each character has their own special moves and rating on abilities. You, being a cyborg, must infiltrate the enemy's hideout, take control of the main computer systems, and battle each of the robot mechanisms that are protecting the supervisor, who is carrying the deadly computer virus that is running the show. Each of these characters are fully rendered using shadows, lighting effects, and other sources to create a realistic, true-to-life creation on the screen. And when you have graphics this good combined with smooth scrolling and accurate controls, then you know you've got a winner, 92. There's six individual robots that you must conquer, and in two-player battle mode, you can choose to be any of them. Except, of course, the supervisor, who is the only character with morphing capabilities. This is a champion game, and in case you haven't worked it out by now, the graphics aren't too bad at all, 94. If you like Gauntlet 4, then you'd love this cheat. Well, password, really. From the options screen, choose quest mode and then continue a quest. Select Thor the warrior and enter this password. Y L O G J 4 E 9 7 X dash T E 8 6 8 X O P W O 9 plus W 3 plus CX1. This will give you 20,000 health points, heaps of items and access to the castle. So if you can put the whole password in before you fall asleep, well, you're laughing. Nigel Mansell's Formula One was one of the big racing games of 1994. Just in time for Christmas, he's back with his version of IndyCar racing. Playing this game may bring back some memories of games like F1 or Super Monaco Grand Prix because the gameplay is practically the same. 
The graphics are good with some visually pumped up background sceneries, but there isn't anything in this racer that we haven't seen before. If you haven't played a racing game before, or you found virtual racing too hard to get a grip on, then this one's for you. You view the game from the cockpit of the car, you accelerate, you steer, and every so often you tap the brakes to make around the corner. Hey, you can even pit in. All the tracks from the International Indy Car Circuit are here, including Oz's very own Surface Paradise course. But as you know, with IndyCar, half the tracks are just circles. It makes me dizzy. 55. It moves all right, it scrolls all right, and it's easy. In fact, way easy to get a grip on. Old news is no news. 65. The action is hotting up in the Trivia Challenge as we go online with our second grand finalist. Let the torture begin. Guess what, Marley? What, man? It's that time, mate. Ah, grand final time. Trivia quiz, and I've got David Sanat on the phone. Dave, Dave, yeah, it's Adam. Um, listen, mate, we've decided that with a last name like yours, you probably took a journey through time, back to the last segment. Right, now, everybody knows about shareware, right, Muttley? Yeah. Um, shareware, you know, like demo discs, they're real cheap, you can play a few levels, see if you like the game. Exactly. Everyone knows But shareware it. has never looked this pretty, has it? No, 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 no. Never looked this pretty, and that's why it's not shareware. In fact, it's called Collectorware. See, Roadshow New Media have released a new range of products called Ram Game. Scary title, I know what you mean. But anyway, this is the vibe. They've got their first 16, which Muttley's just checking out there. And the vibe is, instead of just getting your old scraggy little disc, which doesn't have anything on it, you get a pretty disc with a pretty sticker. You also get really pretty covers. So you can stack them up so they don't look all worn and torn and thing, man, you've got the little picture. Not only that, but what's really popular these days? Cards. Cards. Everybody's collecting cards. So what have they done? They've thrown in, in each little packet, a card. You can collect, so far, all 16. There are 16 titles. There are going to be heaps more. So far, it's just, you know, a lot of the older titles that you've come to know and love, and you can get them in these little packets. Maybe you don't own them. Later on, they're actually talking with, with companies right now about getting products before they're actually released. So you can try them out pre-release, and then if you want the rest, you just pay an extra fee, OK? But anyway, the whole vibe I'm trying to get on here is that we've actually got three sets of 16 of the new Roadshow New Media Ram Gang products. 16 of them, if Muttley keeps his hands off them. So um, basically, if, you are, if you've got, you're on a computer and you want to win, one of the set of 16 Ram Gang titles, right into the Zone Roadshow New Media Competition, PO Box 27 Willoughby, New South Wales 2068, and we'll send you out some. If you win, that is, of course. The Zone, Zone, Zone. Officially, I'm excited. Why? Because we have got the finished version of Donkey Kong Country. I know we reviewed it last week, but we did that off an 80% finished game. This, in Australia, like, have people in Japan got this? People in America? We, in Australia, are the only ones to have this game. That's right, because it was released first here, and so it should be. I've been playing this game, not for long, and this is the first level. This is, this is huge. Last week, we were unsure on things like um, why they give you two players. Well, now we know. They have different capabilities, each player. The, the small bloke goes quick and the big bloke, he just stumps everybody. Oh, he's pretty good. Um, and see that? When one of them dies, the other one keeps going on. And then you, you run around until you can find a, another one of those DK barrels and he comes back and you can use him all over again. It's huge. Now also, there's rumoured to be, so there's rumoured to be, a thousand, uh, no, a thousand, a hundred even, secret levels. There we go. One, only 99 to go. And basically, these are just bonus levels. They're not too hard to get through. You just go through, collect as many bonuses as you can, and get out. Anyway, more on Donkey Kong Country next week, so stay tuned until then. Well, that's all she wrote for today, guys. Hope it was groovy for you, too. Next week, we check out Power Drive, Bloodshot, Ghoul Patrol, and another basketball entry called Awesome College Basketball Hoops. Huge name. And we'll also introduce you to two new hot reviewers. That's next week. That's the zone. See you later.